what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, Sue, how are you? I am good. I miss you. I know. I miss you, too. I'm so happy to see you. So happy to see your face. I'm excited. You're excited? I am so excited. You know, we have been trying to put this together for a while, either for you to get up here or me to get down there. So for me to be able to come back down there with you, I'm so super excited about it. I'm geeked too. I'm so excited. Listen, Nicole is going to be at REI Live Birmingham September 20th. Woo, woo. You, woo, woo. you have to have your face in the place. Make sure you're there. Don't Nicole, miss it. How long have you been investing in real estate? For seven years. For seven years. Seven Tell years. me about your first deal. What was your first deal? First, tell me about your first deal as an investor. Okay, so my first deal as an investor. And then one of the things that I like to say, I like to just clarify with people that even when you buy your first home, it really is your first investment property. But I'll talk about when I made my first investment property that I wanted to actually make money and was looking at the return on my investment with, and that one was seven years ago. So, and I'm saying that to you to say, because I'm about to go on this whole promotion with new new buyers, new people that I'm trying to get in this market to actually buy a house, a bunch of new homeowners to be able to say, because a lot of people are saying, I don't want to own a house. I don't want to pay a mortgage. Well, if you're renting, you're still paying a mortgage, just somebody Absolutely. else's mortgage. Absolutely. So I'm trying to help them change their mindset to say, think of it as an investment. So that's why I wanted to preference that statement with that. But my first investment property seven years ago, if you um, think about the worst experience ever, that's the experience that I had. <laughs> I ended up having to bring money. It was a fix and flip. And I ended up having to bring money to the closing tables to close. So this is not a ploy for people, for me to say to people, get a coach and hire me or to hire you as their coach. It's really just to say, get a coach. So you don't have to bring to the club yes. and say, right? Absolutely. So I was so excited to get this, this flip property, right? And I just was going to Home Depot, finding contractors, you're walking around Home Depot, you're walking around Lowe's and you meet contractors. And I'm like, yeah, so they have them can speak English, but they can speak English enough to get the address. Yes. They were coming over. I have got all what I understand now to be rough ends done, the drywall had went up, everything was done, right? And at that point, I wasn't at the property and a um, inspector rolled past, knocked on the door, they saw the dumpster in the driveway, code enforcement, and came in, knocked on the door, people inside can't speak English, they called me, long story short, I had to go to court, they made me take the walls down and came in, checked electrical, checked plumbing. I failed. So I had to pay for that stuff again. So I had to pay for electrical, plumbing, all of that had to go up a second time. So that ate my profit up. So when I came to this table, I had to bring a couple thousand dollars just to get out of the deal because we having to redo all of that stuff, my court fees, all the stuff that I had to pay, it ate up my profit. And I didn't know, you know, really how to calculate incidentals because you really do have to calculate incidentals you can get the numbers from the contractor you can understand about the taxes you can understand about the monthly payments but if you don't put incidentals in there and an incident happens you'll be like me bringing money to the closing table and do i still own that property hell to the no i got <laughs> fast Okay. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Man, our first our first fix and flip got shut down too. We didn't pull permits and they clearly came inside and they said they had been driving by for weeks and wondering like, are they gonna pull permits? Because we hadn't started it, but once we started, like they realized, okay, they're about to start it. Okay, maybe they're gonna pull that permit. Nope, shut us down. Yeah. And they they apparently knew who we were when they shut us down. Like one of their one but why of why would you ride like tell me huh said yeah it I broke up i can ride cash or property for weeks it's like you wanted to set me up for failure they did they just wanted to see if we were going to be dumb and we were 
and we quickly got this shut down. The contract was called, they just shut us down. What did it mean? <laughs> so, absolutely. We came out of it. I'm glad you came out of it. You not, How many times have you made that mistake again, though? Oh, no. Never again. Never Experience again. The greatest teacher. Yes, it is. Yes, it <laughs> is. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, I'm assuming you didn't have a coach. I did not. You did your first slip. I did not. I did not. What made you be the coach after that? That part, because in my mind, I felt like I ended up just making a $45,000 mistake, right? And then some other things that, you know, I didn't account for landscaping and some other things. So by the time it was over, that was a sixty like $9,000 mistake. I could have went and paid a coach $25,000 and still walked away with some profit in my pocket. So at that point, I just realized that there are some things in my life that will always be a constant. I don't care what level I go to, there's levels to this thing. So as I graduate to new levels, I'll always have a new coach that can help me get to that next level. You know, my family think I'm crazy. At least my kids do, because like I tell them, I have to have a coach for being a mom. Like, yeah. you have a coach for every part of your life. And it's yeah. nothing weird about it. You don't know what you don't know. And somebody got to help you. Say it again. You do not Say know. that. You do not know. <laughs> Love you. All right. And you know what? I think our kids, my daughters are my most valuable asset. If I would have known 15 years ago what I know now, I definitely would have done a much better job at taking parenting classes, getting counseling, family counseling, and doing a lot of different things that people really shouldn't be ashamed to do. And as much money as we spend in coaching and, and taking classes for our business, our families are our biggest investment. So I hey, think the, the match. Absolutely, absolutely. You just said a mouthful right there. Tell me, tell me, tell me, Nicole, what are you gonna teach the members of REI Live? What are you gonna teach? So I'm excited, like, you know, when you asked me, I was just like, yes, whatever. If it's, do you want, is it gonna be real estate agents in the room? I can teach them how to be investor-friendly real estate agents. I'm currently building my multifamily portfolio um, to the whole ne to a whole nother level. So we can talk about that. Um, you know, I've sold over 400 homes in the last five and a half years. So I can teach agents how to be top producing real estate agents and systems, lead generation, consistency, branding, marketing. You tell me what you want me to talk to the people. Want, None. Stop it. I want you to talk about lead generation. Listen, when you were at Ramon's event in Atlanta, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. You blew me away when you did that script. Like, off the top of your head, that was so amazing. I was trying to stop and rewind you while you were on stage. Like, wait, wait, wait. I couldn't get it all. Hold up. So you want to pause me? You want to pause me? Rewind. <laughs> Rewind. Let me make sure I got that because I can write it all down. I you want to. The best thing about this business for me is the relationships. I love the relationship that we have. I love the fact that we can call on each other for anything. Um, I love the relationships that I build here. But more importantly, I love the fact that that first seven years in business as a real estate, the first seven months in business as a real estate agent. Girl, I didn't sell anything, nothing. They not a, right? <laughs> you could have gave up. <laughs> I almost gave up. So glad I did. But now, even for my coaching clients, for me coming to you, going, doing free Zooms, free lives, it really comes from my heart. And the difference in between me and other people and why people should really come to your event that day is because I don't hold anything back. I'm an open book. I understand what God has for me is for me. Nobody can take it away. I'll give you my whole lead gen playbook and who God has ordained for me is already that for me and who he has for you is already for you. So when people give you these cliffhanger courses, I'm like, what's the point of that? Why are you just trying to hold this much back just so people can't really get your secret sauce? Because in essence, nobody can be you. So you can give me actually your whole blueprint and it's not going to do for me 
possibly what it did for you and if i'm not gonna hustle it the same way you hustled it it's so much but anyway long story short i'm excited about coming to drop jams i'll stay up on there stage as long as you want me to and whatever we need to talk about for legion so those people can walk away feel empowered go close some deals go make some money so they can invest it's done sis let's go let's <laughs> go i'm excited you guys make sure your face is in the place you do not want to miss nicole she will be at aria live at the boston parking museum on september 20th doors open at 5 30 the event starts at 6 and we can't wait to have you guys all right. As always, I love you. Peace.